Hey fellow Starbounders, Radamon here. Welcome to episode 1 of my Starbound Let's Play tutorial series. Before we begin, I want to go over how this series will be set up and what we will be focusing upon. Prior to this episode, I polled my entire community on what they'd like to see out of a Starbound series. And here is a quick synopsis of the polls. A link to this image will be in the description of the video as well. So, for starters, the series will feature me as a male Nova Kid. The series will focus on me improving my character's equipment and technology, increasing the size of my spaceship through the addition of a large crew, and building a western-styled colony on an incredibly dangerous and hostile planet. I will also be completing the entire main quest line and side quest lines as well, so spoilers abound for those who want to keep the main storyline not spoiled. I will only be demonstrating a little bounty hunting and collection acquisition, but it will not be the focus of this series. Lastly, I will not be using any mods for this series, nor will any be considered to be added at any point. With all that summarized, let's get started. So here we are at the start of a brand new game. This is the character creation screen. It allows you to select from one of the seven starting species, select your gender, and customize the way you look, give yourself a name, and pick a difficulty. For this series, I'll be playing on survival mode, and I will not be skipping my intro missions. So let's go start. For the intro, uh, it's going to tell you basically how to play, but I'm going to supplement it with some additional information. So your personal assistant, he's telling you to wake up. We've overslept. You can interact with a nearby person, door, or other object by hovering over it and hitting E. If you're curious what the interactable objects are, you can always hold left alt and it highlights them. So this allows us to interact with all the things that are highlightable here. Like sitting on the can, opening doors, closing doors, so on and so forth. If you're ever curious what something is, you can hit N, which is the inspection mode, and it will tell you. This is an airlock, this is a toilet, this is a radio, this lamp. And if you want to empty your hands out, you can hit Z, Z, in order to put your inspection tool or really anything else away. So that way, if you're running around in a town, uh, you don't necessarily have to be running around with a giant sword in your hand or gun or something like that. So it's telling us to get this stuff from our personal locker. Done. And this brings me to my next point. There are armor slots here and cosmetic slots. Cosmetic slots change the way you look without adding any of the stats on the armor. And then the armor slots are for the actual armor. And this way you can look however you want to look regardless of the stats that it imbues. As you can see here. All right, do we have a moment to chat? Sure. Very soon, we'll be a real protector with our own Matter Manipulator. Must be exciting. Matter Manipulators can disassemble all kinds of material. And I'll always have friends on Earth. This is the information kiosk. I opens the inventory here. Q lets you drop the item that we're holding. And toggles the scan, which is what I've already done. Control moves the camera around, but without moving the character around. Always listen to Sale. Sale is the personal assistant. And then Enter allows you to review the chat log. Uh, but also, if you're playing on multiplayer, it will show the messages from multiplayers. If we're stuck on the quests, J is where it's at for active and completed. Spacebar to hop. A light tap is a small jump. Holding it is a higher jump. S to crouch. Q to drop the current item. Okay, and now we're looping. Here's a little vending machine. I have a little bit of credits here, but I'm not going to spend it at my vending machine. All right. So continuing on to the commencement. So as we can see, survive graduation day. Well, that's ominous.
Actually, yeah, let's sit and enjoy the blossoms for a moment. All right, gotta get to graduation. And of course, we're late. Here's the graduating class with me. My fellow protectors, today we come together to watch the protectorate grow. Over 500 years we sit proud here on Earth, drawing together all races of all kinds in the name of peace. Protect our fellow beings to support House and educate those to seek our aid. Foster accord between those who aspire to it. Welcome our newest compatriots. Present them with the greatest tool, the Matter Manipulator. All right, and that is the very start. All right, so the matter manipulator, you can think of as like a mining tool and a building tool all in one. So the protectorate is under attack. The ceiling is collapsed. The matter manipulator can be used to clear the dirt. Press R to equip it. Here it is. Z puts it away. And we just hold left mouse button to dig a path in the dirt so that we can proceed. All right, so this room is entirely flooded. We are going to have to climb ladders. Now to climb a ladder, we just hit spacebar. If we want to go down the ladder, we hold S and hit spacebar to go down. But we, in this instance, want to go up. So, the my sail is telling me to leave the planet immediately. Alright, will do. Torn Protectorate Cape. Uh, I'm already wearing it. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Do you believe we have to dig our way through here again? And we could, uh... There we go. And here is Cargo Hold. This gives us a broken broadsword. Without spoiling anything, you are going to want to keep this broadsword. Do not lose it. Do not sell it. Just hold on to it. And this gives us a weapon. Now, I assign this weapon by dragging it to my toolbar up here, and this is bound to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the broadsword, in this case, is a two-hander, uh, so that I can't have an offhand. But it does have an offhand ability. Now, if we take a look at the blade here, it says the offhand ability is called a spin slash. And this spin slash will use up my energy when I use it. And then when I'm out of energy, I have to wait for my energy to refill. Up here, you have health, energy, and food. In this instance, I am not hungry. Here's some medical supplies. I'm going to bind these meds up here. So we have a salve, which heals 50 health over 10 seconds, and the bandage, which heals 50 health over 1 second. The bandage is a lot faster healing, useful in emergencies, and to use these, I would just hit 2 now, and then left mouse would be self, right mouse would be the bandage. And here is the Nova Kid ship, which looks like a little train. Or actually, it's a pretty big train. Each species has their own unique looking ship. Please reboot the system. Okay, so as you can see, the ship here is pretty wrecked. I'm Sail, your ship 
based artificial intelligence lattice. And they offer me information and advice. Earth was attacked by an unknown force, subsequently annihilated. Earth is gone. And the ship was damaged, so we don't even know where we are. We just blasted off into space. So it's telling us right now that we should beam down to the planet's surface using the teleporter and try to figure out how to fix our ship. If you're ever curious about your quest logs, just hit J. J is the quest journal. And then uh, it will show rewards here as well. So in here, we've got the ship locker. The ship locker, um, I'm going to actually move these meds. The ship locker is one of the most dense storage that you can have in the game right now. All right, let me just take all this. Um, 64 slots for this small object. Trust me, it is pretty useful. Uh, so right now what I'm doing is finding my flashlight. Actually, let me put the protectorate poster. Uh, maybe back into storage, I'm guessing. Let's just do that. Okay, so now we have a flashlight, which is very useful when we're in dark caves or it's nighttime or whatever. Uh, so this would be where the cockpit is, but it's offline because it's broken. This here is where you refuel. Uh, if you're wondering what this pink fluffy thing is, it's just the ship pet. Every species has their own pet, so if I was human, it would have been a cat. In this instance, of course, I am... Uh, a Nova Kid, so it's this fluffy, Kirby looking thing. Alright, so this is telling me sort of my missions. I don't have any current missions or crew. Uh, I'm the only registered crew member of the ship. Recruiting additional crew may allow for operational efficiency, increased operational efficiency. That just basically means a bigger ship. Okay, and then uh, food. So here's one of the things you can drag your inventory screen over here, and if I wanted to eat, I could just drag the food over onto me. I don't actually have to put it in my toolbar. Uh, the thing is, I don't want to eat until my food bar is lower. It'd be a waste. So let's teleport down and do what it says. Now, on survival mode, um, if you die, you do respawn, but uh, you'll have to go get all the items that you drop. So it is advisable that you try to stay alive. And the same rule applies for this game as would a lot of the other games. Don't dig straight down. That's going to hurt um, in, in a lot of instances. It's very dangerous. So as you can see, it is um, a nice forested terrestrial planet. Some of the creatures that you will find will be hostile. Some won't. I can tell you from experience, this guy wants to kill us. Holding left alt will tell us where all of the collection items might be. So I'm getting wheat and wheat seed. Wheat seed is pretty useful if I ever want to farm. I, I do have some torches, which maybe I'll put on six. Now there is also um, multiple... There is multiple uh, toolbars. If you hit X, you switch between them. So you can have a primary toolbar and a secondary toolbar. Here's just a lovely little koi pond, let's assume. And if you're wondering, each planet has a finite size. So if you go left far enough, you'll return back to your origin point. Alright, I've got, got pretty hurt, so I'm going to use the salve here. And... Cut down some trees. Now, the matter, man matter manipulator that you have can be improved once you collect mods for it. So, if we click over here, this is the matter manipulator upgrade screen. As you can see, I need matter manipulator modules to make this better. And this is something that's very, very important to collect as it will increase the efficacy of your tool. Now, because it's nighttime, 
uh, the creatures are going to be a lot more hostile to me than if it was daytime. So at this point, uh, I also want to hotkey uh, dirt blocks so that we can build in an emergency. If I'm falling or something, I can just, you know, build below me. It, it takes a lot of practice. Probably a lot of your initial deaths are going to be from just falling accidentally and not really managing to catch yourself in time. But this planet seems to have a lot of crop, which is great. And some of these foods will spoil quickly, some will not. So raw steak spoils much faster than, let's say, a potato. Um, and then if we ever want to eat, as I said, you can just drag it right over your guy. Now that it's becoming daytime, the amount of hostile creatures that I'm going to uh, interact with will decrease. Nighttime is always more dangerous than daytime, uh, as a general rule of thumb. So here we have uh, some sort of underground facility. Let's go check it out. So the for the most part, the concept of ownership is a little loose. And right now, the sale is telling me to get core fragments. And also informing me that one of the things I picked up was a matter manipulator module, which upgrades my matter manipulator. So this was a little, like, mining shaft of sorts. So I'm picking up some ores here. As you can see, I've got uh, copper, iron, and core fragments. Now, if it's ever too dark and you need to see where you're going, you can always use the flashlight that you were granted in your ship storage. And then we'll be able to cook on this campfire. You can also make your own campfires, but uh, the rice and pearl peas and potatoes and stuff like that, I can always cook up. Um, so if I go to my food tab, here's some boiled rice, and that fills me up better than if it was raw rice. And then there will be little interactable sleeping objects, like this tent, that will very slowly but passively heal you, uh, where I don't have to necessarily use a salve or bandage or anything like that. Now you can craft your own here in the crafting screen, which is C. Uh, you can see that I can make salve if I had plant fibers, I can make um, campfires, inventor tables, so on and so forth. These are all going to be very, very important for me to craft up at some point. I've also acquired some throwing weapons, so let me demonstrate those. Here's some throwing darts and hunting spears. Throwing weapons are very strong, but they're single use. Or some of them can be very strong, but they're single use. There we go. And in this instance, uh, let's pair the throwing darts with my uh, flashlight so I can see where I'm throwing. That would be a little easier. So you know how I said I can make my own meds? Um, they require plant fibers. So the plant fibers can be found right here. These vines are a pretty steady source of plant fiber. And then left click mines up um, foreground tiles and right click mines up background tiles. And in this instance, the background here is still the planet, so I just sort of dug a hole. Once you get deep enough, um, you can't dig for light like this. But in this instance, it would also let me beam up to my ship. So it's a good way to, if you can't, if you're close to the surface, but you can't quite figure out where it is, you can beam up pretty easily. Alright, 
so all of these new I'm going to make 10 ropes out of the plant fibers that I have and then the rest into self now for the rope here rope is until you are later game rope is going to be one of these really 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 important tools to use to prevent uh, fatal fall damage because a rope you could think of it as a single use grappling hook it's essentially what it is so I'm just collecting as many plant fibers as I can as a lot of the initial tools require plant fibers and then you can also find in these little storage containers some uh, some pixels which is currency Now, the thing I just interacted with was sort of a chance, um, a chance box, sort of random things happen. It's not always negative. It could heal me or spell out a whole bunch of pixels, or it could try to set me on fire in the case that just happened to me. So, my quest here is saying to find archaic energy source, and it has a left arrow. So, I should be going in this direction. That doesn't necessarily mean I need to go into this cave. It just means I need to be going, uh, let's call it west. And here's a great case for ropes. Uh, but I might need to excavate my way up. Now, as your character levels up and gains more technology, uh, you will gain the ability to traverse terrain much, much, much more rapidly. I'm a, a lowly guy with no extra technology or anything like that, so terrain traversal is very, very slow at first, but eventually... Oh, there, oh man. I am uh, bad at aiming these. There we go. Eventually you get a lot, lot faster. Now, some of the creatures that you interact with aren't necessarily going to be hostile by default. Um, especially in the day. And there is significant fall damage. I Let's pretend I meant to do that just to demonstrate um, that fall damage is dangerous. Right. There we go again. Okay, you guys want to fight? an egg and obtaining a new resource in this case an egg allows me to learn how to craft things that use the egg in this case like omelets and, and the like you will find it's pretty common to find ruins like this sometimes um, the ruins will also lead to uh, chests and other hidden objects the really quick way to figure out if they have hidden objects like that is if you hold left alt you might see a chest underneath the building but if you don't um, there's probably nothing there and we've just entered a new biome as you can see it went from trees to these sort of giant flower like plants and it's becoming nighttime again the day night cycle is uh is pretty quick all right so these trees gave me giant flower petals now it's also dropping saplings to me uh so as you can see here we've got a few saplings and these saplings allow you to replant and regrow and also transplant so if you like a certain type of tree and you want to grow it in your colony that you're building you can always go find some saplings and uh, transport it back I also, along the way, picked up a blue sleeping bag, which is um, going to allow me to sleep wherever I want. I can just, as long as there's space, I can put it down. Let's, being offered up the opportunity to get some more vines, I will not pass it up. 
because we want more ropes. I need a whole lot more south. It does not hurt to have a lot of meds, trust me. Now the only problem with salves is over the course of 10 seconds, uh, I can't use more salves, right? So if I'm getting hurt really, really, really quickly, um, salve is not good to use because it will prevent me from using other uh, curatives. Here we have the giant radishes. Now in this instance, I could also equip the powerful throwing weapons, which are single use, and uh, dispatch these guys a little bit more easily. Oh boy. So here's an instance where my guy is pretty hurt and I just need to sort of back up and uh, heal myself. What with the acid? And we're having a little, uh, it's pretty. The, uh, the sort of st star rain. Alright, let's get over to the archaic energy source. Tomato. Ooh, probably didn't need to kill that little bunny. Not everything is hostile. It's easy to forget that when everything continually attacks you. Alright. This here is what we're looking for. And it's telling us that we need uh, 15 more gate fragments to activate it. So we need core fragments. I picked up five of them in the mining shaft from before. Core fragments usually are in the core of the world. So we'll have to dig down for them. Now one thing that's really, really important, and I cannot stress this enough, um, make sure you remember where you start digging down to. The reason I say this is uh, in the case where, let's say, you die. When you die, you just actually respawn back on your ship, but on the mode that I'm currently playing on, you won't respawn with any of the stuff you've collected. Or actually, some of it, but not all of it. So you won't spawn... You'll spawn with your weapon and armor, but you won't spawn with all of the sort of stuff in your inventory. It spills out of you, much the way it would in, let's say, Minecraft. Oh, I just dodge that regeneration. Um, so in this case, it's going to be really, really important that you somehow denote exactly where you started to dig down from so that you can get back to where, if you do end up dying, you can get back to where you died. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a wild goose chase trying to figure out where exactly you perished and how to get back there. Now, because we're pretty close to this sort of story ruin, it was preventing us from, um, it was preventing us from digging there. But what I'm going to start to do is, right next to this ruin to the left, I'm going to dig a mining shaft. Now, in this game, there are lots and lots of tunnels and under underground systems. Um, so, just digging randomly, I'm pr it will be probably not too long until I find some sort of tunnel system that allows me to explore a little bit quicker and, and more efficiently. And here we are. Already got one. And more or less all planets are like this. They're all very large subterranean structures. It's very, very common. Unless you're... There's some planets where that might not be true, but for the most part that, that holds to be true. Unfortunately for this, this one, it uh, goes nowhere. Another thing we could do is to 
mark where we've been with torches. Because there aren't a lot of cases where torches will naturally spawn. So it's a good way to figure out, hey, where have I been and how to get back to where I want to go. Uh, here is some coal that I can dig up. All of the ores in this game are going to be very, very useful for you to acquire initially. Um... Fortunately, it isn't so much of a grinding game like uh, some others are, uh, where you're going to need to spend an insane amount of time, you know, mining. Uh, the mining requirements in this game are a lot, lot lighter. Unless, of course, you're trying to build some sort of expansive metal town, uh, the game doesn't require you to do a whole lot of mining. I'm also digging now through cobblestone, which is a little tougher to dig through than, uh, than rock. Than the uh, rather than the dirt that I was digging before, but in the search for core fragments, I can't be picky. Now let's place another torch. Instead of going towards the other passage, I'm going to chance just going down further, and I'm not digging straight down for two reasons. One. Uh, because straight down would make it very difficult for my character to get back up once uh, once I get those core fragments and I want to return to the surface. And two, it stops the, the chance of you plummeting to your death or something. Alright, so here we go. We've got um, some ores here. Copper ore. We've got coal. And at the moment, my uh, meta manipulator digs in a 2x2 two two square. So I can dig out four at a time. That's important to remember because um, it can make excavating a lot faster. And I'm using my flashlight to make sure that the, the falls here are survivable. And the torches just to illuminate the way. So if there is a big drop, what I can do is grapple and repel. It also allows me to swing. And big drops in this instance are actually very, very, very handy because, um, well, I need to get down, right? So it allows me to just get down a whole lot faster. And these torches will sort of help mark the way back to the surface. Whoa! Wow, I got very, very, very lucky there. As you can see, my health went down to basically zero. Uh, and I wasn't really prepared to do anything to save myself, right? I didn't have my... Uh, my rope's up, ready to catch myself or something like that. Uh, let's just call it uh, out of practice. Uh, another thing I want to do is let's grow, grab some dirt blocks so that I can build more easily. So with these dirt blocks, the meta manipulator lets me place things like dirt or whatever so that I can change the you know, change the environment around me really quickly and more effectively. There we go again with me and my love of gravity. I'm just making sure I collected all of the iron. I think I did. Um, these fossils here that you see, um, they are part of collecting stuff later on in the game. Not something that you are going to bother with early on until you have uh, the right facilities to collect. All right, so there's a little bit of ruins around where I am. As you can see, there's um, there's some some structures and and whatnot. All right, I think at this point, let's go place another torch.
and try to be a bit more cautious than I have been so far. So being more cautious, that also means uh, some new ropes. I'm not gonna make 30, well, I'll make 20 ropes. Make sure I have enough. Now, later on in the game, you will get a multi-use grapple hook, a infinite use, in fact, grapple hook, but um, early on, it's single use only. Okay, so here is a, oh, hello. One of the old ruins, and any interactable object, like the boxes, uh, can be highlighted with uh, left alt. And that way, even in the dark, uh, I could sort of figure out if there's useful things nearby. Oh, we've got some gold, don't we? Now, in this game, gold might be worth a little bit more pixels than, let's say, iron, but um, it isn't worth a whole lot more. You're going to need a little bit of every ore. So gold, in my opinion, is not like... It's rarer, but it's not... It is not like finding uh, diamonds in Minecraft, let's say. It's not spe that special. So here, the... Glowing things down here, these are core fragments. This is what we've been after the whole time. So let me just dig up some plant fibers. Don't ignore the silver. And these are core fragments. Now core fragments tend to be near the core of the planet, which also means that there should be lava nearby. So I have to be very, very cautious of not uh, lighting myself on fire on lava. Additionally, I'm uh, just trust me when I say this, you're going to want a little bit more than the minimum requirement. So it asks for 20, but grab a little bit more than 20. You're down here already. You might as well grab, let's say, let's aim for like 50 or so. And here, as you can see, there's lava. Uh, lava is always um, fairly dangerous. There's ways to resist fire later on, but. Um, Dumping yourself into a pool of lava never feels good. Not unless you have cheats on. Now, it wouldn't be an instant death. Um, it would do damage, high levels of damage over time. Giving you the opportunity to... You know, get to... Dry ground, or, or whoever you want to call it. Additionally, see these little stalactites and stalagmites? They do damage if you walk into them. Uh, on easier planets, like the one I'm currently on, they're not too many of them, but some planets later on will literally be filled to the brim with those little suckers. And they're annoying. So now it's telling me that I have enough core fragments uh, to activate the gate. But, uh, like I said, I want to get a few more core fragments. It's because... Some things are unlocked with stuff like core fragments, and um, I could save myself a lot of trouble in the future not having to dig all the way down to the core of a planet again by just collecting a few more than I currently need now. So right now I have 32 core fragments. Let's get a little bit more, but I'm going to try to find some easier ones to get. Yep, there you can see the stalagmite and all of its damage and glory. So this cluster and maybe one other. And then we'll head up back to the surface on sales orders. Here we 
there was some gold there. And might as well spend the moment to get some gold. So there's also stuff to be unlocked when you obtain a certain amount of gold, silver, etc., etc. So they're also pretty important to acquire. Um, I'm not really interested in digging so far down to get the core fragments that are like deeply embedded. So let me double back and call the current hall that I have of core fragments good. And head up to the surface. So we're more or less going to want to backtrack. Now, in this case, uh, one of the easier methods is just to build hop like this. But build hopping requires there to be backdrop. So as you can see, there's a hole here in the backdrop. So I'd have to place the background tiles first and then the foreground tiles. So there is a bit of a an important order to it. But this is also why I keep uh, dirt in my toolbar uh, so that you can very easily uh, traverse terrain. So here, the wooden box that I was at before. Now, subterranean exploration is going to be very, very important, especially when you want to upgrade your mana manipulator and uh, obtain some new technology, because the mana manipulator uh, parts tends to be found underground. Uh, same with technology, same with tech modules. All right, let's continue the hopping. And I believe we came from over there. I'm just going to be extra cautious. Build a whole path. All right. And we definitely came from the left. Because it's all illuminated with the torches. Rude little, little animals. Continue up. Now, a lot of the planets that you're on, yeah, just be very, very careful not to let uh, monsters like that push you off of a ledge or something. That's a very, very quick way to, to die. A lot of the planets that you're on, uh, you pr you tend not to go back to the same planets more than once or twice, unless you have some sort of special quest that takes you there. So, mining destructively and, and other behaviors like that is actually not that much of a problem. You know, if you want to strip mine and leave it nasty for the future. This, of course, isn't true in multiplayer. In multiplayer, you might want to be a little bit more respectful of the surroundings. But on single player, that's, uh, you know, not, not that much of a problem. Okay, so we're almost up top again with all of our core fragments. And I've used up nearly all the dirt I used to dig down here uh, just to get back out. And here we are, back on the surface. And we will be able to activate the gate. Alright, teleport to some strange location. And here is exactly where we are going to end this episode. So if you have any feedback for me, do drop me a line in the comments below. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I will catch you all another time. Adios, everybody.